Depending on where you live, the effects of climate change may differ. Temperature increases, more frequent heat waves, more storms and less rainfall are all possible outcomes, but at most coastal locations, sea level rise and greater storm surges are also potential consequences. Welcome to Waterfront Guru, hit that bell to subscribe and check this. Oceanographers estimate the sea levels increase by about 3.6 mm per year, and as the oceans rise, on the coast we have the risk of catastrophic storms and flooding with the most common and less harmful on the surface, nuisance flooding. Nuisance flooding refers to low levels of inundation that do not pose significant threats to public safety or cause major property damage, but can disrupt routine day-to-day -day activities put added strain on infrastructure systems such as roadways and sewers and cause minor property damage. Compared to extreme flooding and disasters, the occurrence and impacts of nuisance flooding are often ignored, but drive around a saltwater flooded area to see the effects on your car parts. Sea level rise really happening? Some people seem to think that climate change is just something for future generations, but as coastal cities continue to become more and more flooded with sea levels rising every day, this problem isn't going away anytime soon. In Maryland, precipitation increased by 6.3 inches per decade, according to the NOAA. The administration also found the Northeast Atlantic region saw 100 to 150 percent more flood days in 2020 than in 2000. Rising seas have induced a particular type of increased flooding around Maryland, a phenomenon known as sunny day flooding because of the absence of rainfall as a trigger, happened more often in the last decade. As sea levels rise and storm surges become more frequent, coastal towns have three options for dealing with the situation. Protect by building seawalls for example, accommodate by adapting to the impact, or retreat. When it comes to preparing for sea level rise, homeowners have several alternatives. Home elevation, ensuring the components of the home that may flood can cope, for example the foundations, building a limited life home to reduce financial outlays, move your house somewhere else. It's also possible that stormwater systems won't be as effective in draining into the sea, which might lead to flooding further inland. NASA has been studying all aspects of sea level rise for decades now, armed with satellites, airborne missions, shipboard measurements, and supercomputers. NASA launched the first satellite mission to measure ocean heights in 1992. Together with international partners, they monitor sea level rise with high accuracy and precision, and estimated that total global sea level is rising approximately 0.13 inches, 3.3 millimeters a year. In 2014, NASA created a sea level change science team to bring together experts from across the agency and other institutions that study different aspects of this multidisciplinary problem. These experts study glaciers, ice sheets, ocean physics, land movement and more to tackle what sea level rise looks like now and what it will look like in the future. And they have defined the problem as caused mainly by a few factors. Meltwater from ice from the glaciers and ice sheets. Thermal expansion, not only is more water flowing into the ocean from ice sheets and glaciers, the warmer water of the ocean is taking up more space, adding to sea level rise. Ocean circulation, sea level rise isn't consistent across the globe. Some coastal areas see triple the average rate of rise, while others don't observe any changes or can even see a drop in sea level. Solid earth dynamics. Rising sea levels can also be compounded by sinking land. The Mississippi River Delta, for example, is essentially drowning as sinking ground from resource extraction, sediment loading, and the weight of the built environment is combined with higher sea levels. Blue sky flooding common in Florida as of lately. Tidal flooding was regularly filling the streets of St. Pete Beach in Florida in 2019, with seawater becoming a growing problem for some neighborhoods on the low-lying island. So much that the city approved an 869,000 improvement project that installed one-way valves that block seawater from coming up the storm drains to prevent king tide bay water flooding in the streets and stormwater flooding as well. 
a local resident, Mary Palmer 88, has lived in, in a one home on St. Petersburg for the past 23 years and said for the first time she began planning her day around the high tides. She mentions having to watch the tide when she would go out to avoid driving through salt water which can be pretty bad for vehicles. In places with relatively shallow continental shelves, such as along the North Carolina coast, nuisance flooding have increased several fold in the past couple of decades, with cities like Beaufort, North Carolina seeing 30 to 40 flood days a year this decade, compared with fewer than 10 in the 1980s. Many of these happen in the absence of stormy conditions, hence the name Blue Sky Flooding. With funding from the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, Kent State University in Ohio has been working on mapping and creating models that can simulate the likelihood of blue sky floods weeks out to help give communities a chance to prepare. The project, funded for about 287,000 over three years, focusing on nuisance floods that result from short-term rises in sea level along the Atlantic and Pacific coasts of the United States. So are the waters really rising? Yes, they are. Sea level is primarily measured using tide stations and satellite laser altimeters. Tide stations around the globe tell us that what is happening at a local level, the height of the water as measured along the coast relative to a specific position on land. Satellite measurements provide us with the average height of the entire ocean. To prove that the sea is rising, this sea level rise map from National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration shows the elevation trends around the world based on real measurements. Find your location and check the sea level trends near you. You see that in Finland and Sweden, for example, because of the local evolution of the tectonic plates there, the land is actually rising. The modest adaptation so far has been from insurance companies avoiding to insure users in risky areas, flood alert systems being improved and local adaptation projects such as in Miami Beach, but these isolated actions are more palliative than a solution. How are cities preparing for extreme water level events? The city of Miami Beach has had many programs in place in a multi-year, multi-million dollar program installing a series of storm water pumps, improved drainage systems, elevated roads and higher seawalls. Despite his history of referring to climate change as a hoax and his recent rollback of emissions slashing initiatives, ex-president Donald Trump is one of these property owners with a stake in the issue. The president frequently visits his Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, 75 miles north of Miami, which is itself an area experiencing flooding from high tides. There also are six Trump-branded residential buildings in Sunny Isles, one of which still provides the president with income, and a Trump-branded uh, complex in Hollywood. But even without floods, the rising water table affects everything. The cities in South Florida are built on porous limestone, and the water doesn't just come over seawalls. It seeps up from beneath the streets. Nearly 90% of the drinking water in South Florida comes from aquifers, and in Hallandale Beach, a small city of just under 40,000 residents north of Miami, salt water already has breached five of the eight freshwater wells that the city draws from. Planning for sea level adaptation for your property. As cities work on public infrastructure to face the increasing problem, property owners should consider the effects of a rising sea level on their location when planning to buy or upgrade in their home. One of the most common residential adaptations is the HVAC systems and electric meters being raised high enough that they are not affected when water levels rise during a flood. Again, these changes are suitable for both you and the expensive equipment in these areas because if they get flooded there won't be any need to replace anything. The construction department sets performance standards for buildings built in bush fires, cyclone and flooding prone regions. In addition to these minimal requirements, adaptive methods should be explored. Consider the following questions as you design or redesign a home. Will the site and the structure be affected by expected sea level rise? In the event of severe weather, what are the likely repercussions for the house? Managing shifting climate conditions can be made easier if you construct your home with flexibility in mind and pay attention to where it sits on your lot. 
one option is to make sure your site has enough area for additional rain or stormwater storage and drainage, increasing the height of the floor to prevent flooding. Potential unintended result is the use of fill to raise the floor could upset some type of soils and require more adaptation work afterwards, so do your research beforehand. It could make it more difficult to those who are less physically fit to use, include ramps or other alternatives if applicable. Why does someone need to elevate their house? Lifting your house might be adventurous for a variety of reasons. After a natural disaster or even before one, many people want to have their houses elevated to avoid floods. Lifting their home is an excellent solution for those who don't have the option of expanding horizontally. You can build room for a basement or fix a shaky foundation by excavating. Whatever the cause, lifting your house is a major operation and you want a professional house lifter on the job to make sure it's done right and safely. It's time to go to work once your crew is put together. There you have it folks, I hope you liked this new video. Hey comment down below if you like this content and let us know which other content you would like to see as part of this series. Make sure to leave us a like and subscribe. I'm Waterfront Gurus and I'm out.